Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Hamza Youssef has struck fear into the heart of every single business owner in Scotland. As part of his obsession for independence, he needs also to join the EU. He keeps insisting upon it because it is the settled will of Scotland. That has many problems. One of them, of course, is that it means joining the Euro. The other is one of cognitive dissonance. How can you demand independence from England and a union where you have a say and a vote and you can decide what laws are imposed as opposed to joining the EU where you have no say and no vote and laws are handed down by an unelected elite for which you have no democratic oversight. It's a very strange sort of independence, isn't it? Going away from where you do have a say to where you don't. But hey ho, that's not my problem, that's his problem. The other problem though is the Euro. By joining the EU you have to adopt it and as every business owner in Scotland knows the single biggest trader that Scotland has is with England. We are the biggest business partner. And by joining the EU and the Euro you're imposing a hard customs line and a foreign currency. These are two things that will add immense burdens onto businesses in Scotland. Does he actually want the Scottish economy to collapse? It does seem that. It's a very odd thing to demand. But anyway, we'll take a look at this article, see what's going on and see why he thinks joining the Euro is so very important. And also within this article, it may, <laughs> there's some points that he makes claims on which absolutely make no sense or are, at the very least, plain wrong. Here goes. So Hamza Yousaf signals shift on the Euro. If Scotland backs independence, Scotland won't back independence because I find most Scots aren't that stupid. However, Hamza Yousaf has signalled an independent Scotland would be willing to sign up to adopting the Euro in principle to secure membership of the European Union. And nobody knows why he's thinking this. It's sheer madness as part of the efforts to make allies on the continent and take a realistic stance on the process. He said Scotland would go through a normal accession route and accept the principles of accession, which includes, of course, agreeing to adopt the euro in future as the currency. However, speaking to a think tank in Brussels earlier this week, the First Minister indicated Scotland would not necessarily use the shared currency in practice. So. He's saying, oh, we'll sign up to it in principle, but we won't use it in practice. So why should anyone in Euroland believe anything he says if he's actually telling them the two complete opposite things? Does he not realise that people talk? Oh, yes, 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 we'll sign up. We want to be part of the EU. We'll sign up to the Euro. We're never going to use it. What? They're not going to let him in if he doesn't use it, if he doesn't promise to use it. If he's standing there saying we're never going to use it, why would they let him in? Anyway. The SNP's existing policy is to keep using the pound in the early years of independence before moving to a new Scottish currency as soon as practical. Well, <laughs> that'll be a while. You don't have enough there. Uh, although theory is that all the COVID money, all the money, all the money that's disappeared, everything that seems to have disappeared over the last few years is actually sitting there in a bank somewhere waiting to be used as the basis of a national bank. Yeah. Banco Nationale El Scotlando. Uh, anyway, that's a, that's a different video. I'll do that on a different day. Anyway, although agreeing to adopt the euro in, in theory is a precondition of EU membership, in practice countries can choose to avoid it by not meeting certain specific criteria. But the very fact that you're signing up in principle shows that you are a liar. Because if you're signing up in principle but intend to never use it, then that is a bad faith action. Why should anyone believe anything you say? Uh, it is understood Mr Yousaf remains opposed to using the euro. So he's opposed to it, but he's signing up in principle. Hypocrite. Uh, but agree Scotland may need to agree to using it in principle to smooth the path to EU membership. Worst thing Scotland can do is join the EU, and we'll see why in a moment. Uh, however, even a nod and a wink commitment to adopt the euro could be seized on by his unionist opponents to claim there is confusion 
over independence currency plans. Of course there's confusion. He hasn't got a clue what he's talking about. Uh, and it could also spook nationalists' intent on having a Scottish pound. Yeah, because here's the other thing. There's people who want an independent Scotland, but who don't. And this is where he fails. He, see, he seems to think that being one thing means you're the other thing. There's people who want to be independent, but who don't want to join the EU. He seems to think that everyone who's uh, an independent is pro-EU. That's not necessarily the case. And so he's going to have a very tough time even convincing everyone who's a nationalist to join that this is the right thing to do. Um, the Scottish Tories last night attacked his navel-gazing amid the cost of living crisis. Yeah, because I mean, he's sitting there, he's looking down the line. He hasn't got a, a time frame for this and he's wasting time, effort, money, thought processes, everything on a what-if scenario, you know. And basically, it... Uh, He's doing a gook's errand, isn't he? He's off there, you know, he's trying to <laughs> hang in mints. He's off after hang in mints, this man. And he shouldn't be. He should be actually doing his day job. But instead he's fantasising about a world of what-ifs and maybes and, you know, wishes were horses, you know. Anyway, between the meetings with EU diplomats this week, although no one knows why because he's not the leader of a national government, Mr Yousaf also told the European Policy Centre that there would be a light touch customs checks at the border with a post-Brexit England if Scotland was back in the EU. He says he's got no control over that. Now, the problem you have here is he's looking at Northern Ireland and Northern Ireland with the light touch customs checks. However, the light touch customs checks in Northern Ireland is a specific one-off case that the EU agreed to simply because of historical differences and because of the Good Friday Agreement. And they were saying, and normally they would have had a very hard border, but because of the Good Friday Agreement, because of the historical differences, because of the political case particular to Northern Ireland, and it is specific and unique to Northern Ireland, they agreed a soft touch case but with a slightly harder border in the North Sea. There is no reason why, A, the EU would allow soft touch border between Scotland, which is in the EU, and England, which is not. And there's no reason why England would offer a soft touch border with Scotland, because it isn't the same case as the Irish problem. So he, again, is living in a fantasy land. He's making assumptions and he's saying things for which there is no evidence and even there's no case and there's no historical precedent. He's talking a load of Dingo's kidneys, isn't he? Anyway, he acknowledged the SNP's pledge to remove nuclear weapons from the Fastlane naval base would require multilateral negotiations with the rest of the UK, the US and NATO. Indeed, it would. Uh, and, oh, and it would take time and he, and, and he would lose, uh, as they left, he would be watching thousands of highly paid jobs leave Scotland. That money that would otherwise go into that local community would disappear. That local community would become bereft and uh, poverty stricken. All the tax earned from people paying income tax on those highly paid jobs would come south and go into the English coffers. I mean, the man is such an economic genius. He is... He really is. He's up there with Adam Smith, with Milton Friedman, with John Maynard Keynes, with Milton Keynes, John Milton. Anyway, he's up there. He's a guy is brilliant. He's looking at this. He's making these decisions and destroying the economy. Every decision he makes destroys the economy. And you can't. I can't think down to his level. Anyway, he revealed that the Scottish Government plans to publish another instalment of its independent prospectus, building a new Scotland on Europe in the autumn. What? He's wasting more millions of taxpayers' money on pipe dreams because he is never going to get independence. Why is he doing this? If he ever wants to get independence, and we're going to come to another, another little circular logic here he's got here, but if he ever wants his independence, he's got to earn it. He's got to have the people of Scotland saying, actually, yes, look, we trust the SNP to run this. We trust them to do this. They look around at the education, the health, the social care and all this and they go, we don't trust them. If you want any chance of getting independence, you've got to make Scotland work. And it isn't.
Getting back anyway, he said there'll be one on citizenship in a few weeks and another later on security and defence, which he said would be incredibly important. You've got no security and no defence. You haven't got enough there. You can't earn enough. You don't have enough people. You don't have enough money. It's a joke. Everything about this man and his plans are a joke. Mr Yousaf's predecessor, Nicholas Sturgeon, published a related paper on the economy last October. More public expense all the time. Money, 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 rather than putting that money into where it's needed. Anyway, she said that Scotland should rejoin the EU to benefit from the single market. Well, you've got a major problem on your hands, which we'll come to in a moment. Uh, anyway, but at the same time, she said using the euro was not the right option for Scotland. And this led to four EU sources telling the Times that the Scottish application to join the EU would be dismissed without a pledge to join the euro. Under the EU's accession rules, all member states are obliged in principle to introduce the euro once they meet the legal and economic conditions for joining it. Only Denmark has an explicit opt-out. Uh, Britain had an opt-out, the United Kingdom had an opt-out as well. So if we went back in, we'd have to use the euro and that would destroy our economy and destroy any semblance of any kind of control that we would have. Joining, rejoining the EU would be ultimately the very worst thing. It would ultimately destroy this country um, in every conceivable way. Um, but countries can avoid adopting it by deliberately failing to meet the criteria, which include two years of tying their currency to the euro in an exchange rate mechanism. In a QA after the speech uh, to the EPC on Tuesday, Mr Youssef was asked about an independent Scotland using the euro. And he made it clear that although there would be negotiation, he was ready to accept the same principles as all the other applicant states. And there are currently eight countries in the process of joining the 27 member political and economic bloc. Now, there's a few more bits and bobs, which is all there. But this is the bit, of course, that uh, is troublesome. Troublesome for Hamza Youssef, that is. It said here, um, Scottish voters supported remaining in the EU by 62% to 38% in the 2016 referendum. But the, whole, but the UK as a whole voted 52-48 in favour of Brexit. Now, now that we've ha we're out, you would have to rerun the, 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 the European referendum again in Scotland because people are aware that Britain, you know, the remainder of Britain, is the biggest single trading partner Scotland would have. And when they're told that if they went back into the EU, they would have to have a hard border. There would be various difficulties in crossing the border. There'd be various difficulties with passport control, things like that. They'd have to have a big customs check. They'd be told that they would have to change currencies eventually. All these sort of things. That's major change. That's constitutional change. That would require another referendum and there's no guarantee and in fact I, I i would actually make the claim that it would be slightly more popular to remain outside the eu than to join it even as an independent scotland i think uh, even as an independent scotland the people of scotland would say no we need to remain outside of the eu so that we can have free passage of trade across the border with England, the single biggest trading partner Scotland has. And I actually would make the prediction that it would be outside. They would reject EU membership. But that, that's just, it's just a feeling I have. I've got nothing to say it was any other issue. But he can't rely on that figure of 62 to 38, given the massive change in circumstances. So that is a very, very difficult one for him as well. Um, so Mr Youssef also addressed the thorny issue of Scotland being in the EU if England was out, which is what we're talking about, which would make that Scotland-England border an external EU border. Now this is where he says, and I've addressed this, he says, when it comes to the movement of people, we'll be part of the common travel area, much like the Republic of Ireland. There's no issue there. But we're not part of the, co the, the common travel area. We're not part of Schengen or anything. So you, yeah, Scots can go in and out of Europe easy enough wouldn't necessarily be the case across the border with England. Ireland is a specifically special case because of the history. Scotland is not. It, you may need visas. Can you imagine? 
but yes, I'm good, he said. There'll have to be some light touch. Custom check, he said. We've updated that. No, the, the light touch is Ireland specific because of the history. There's, there's no way the EU would allow a light touch one with Scotland. There's no political agreement in place that predates it. And so there's, he, can't, he can't say there'll be a light touch. That's more fantasy and dreaming. Uh, and of course he said, we can negotiate with the UK government to try and make that as light touch as possible. But there's no reason for the, uh, for, for the, Brit uh, for the, you know, the um, UK, remainder of UK government to agree to do anything. They can go, no, no, we want a firm hard border. Bang. And put the, we can put the razor wire up. There's nothing Scotland can do about that. Uh, and of course, with the EU, they don't have to make that. Well, if you're part of the EU, you, you can get your free movement. That's fine. He said, also, up front, is that the EU is a market that is seven times the size of the UK. Yes, it is seven times the size of the UK. But that doesn't mean that you are selling seven times as much to the EU as you are to England. You ask anyone in Scotland, where does the stuff go? For example, where does most of the meat go? Where does most of the oil go? Where does most of the whiskey go? You know, it, it is the single easiest trading post and you're about to lose it. You'd be saying goodbye to an awful lot of Scottish businesses. Tory MSP Donald Cameron said, Scots who are struggling with the cost of living crisis will have no interest in Hamza Yousaf's navel gazing in relation to the euro. It appears he's had to accept reality and rip up Nicola Sturgeon's economic paper to further his independence obsession. Hamza Yousaf is totally distracted trying to break up the United Kingdom by any means possible, rather than focusing on Scotland's real priorities, such as supporting people with rising bills and fixing the NHS. They're basically slagging in because the man is incapable of doing his day job, which is why he focuses all the time on you know, independence and then joining the EU and giving up all independence. We want to be independent for a day, is basically his call. We want to be free of England, where we can sit in a parliament, have a discussion, have a vote, have an influence. We can bring forward laws. Because you go into Europe, you cannot bring forward laws. Only the EU Commission can bring forward laws in Europe. And the EU Commission is not democratically elected. It is imposed. So the people of Scotland, do you want to be part of a union where you vote and you have a say and you have an influence? Or do you want to just be a region of the grand EU with your imposed overlords for whom you have no democratic mandate. It's up to you. I'm coming up. I get the impression that Hamza Yousaf has never actually sat down and thought about the things he's saying and looked at the consequences. I don't think he even understands that there are any consequences. To put a hard border between England and Scotland, to force on a different currency with your biggest trading partner. Both of these are sheer madness. And of course, he has no mandate to even go for independence. He has no mandate to join the EU. He has no mandate to force a different currency. And he has no mandate to put, uh, impose a hard border. None of these things. He's pipe dreams. He's talking five, six, seven votes. Referendum down the line. He isn't guaranteed to win any of them. Why is he wasting time, effort and above all millions of pounds on rubbish like this when the whole of the Scottish economy is collapsing around the SNP's ears? There's a country that's had the government too long, basically. The SNP have been in power for so long they've run out of all ideas and they're sticking just to the one that they can agree with. <laughs> and the thing is, they can agree, oh, within the SNP, they all want independence. But here's the thing. They don't know what independence they want. So it's even the type of independence. Is it an independence completely bereft of everyone? Is it independence, but in a relationship with the rest of the UK? Is it independence with a relationship with the EU? Is it independence where you're totally subsumed into the EU? Not a, ch not a clue. They aren't addressing the big problems, are they? But then this is the SNP. They don't do that. Anyway, thank you very much. This has been a very long video, and I do apologise for that. Uh, but if you have made it to the end, well done. I'll give you a medal. Uh, thanks very much for watching. So if you do like what you hear and see, do hit the subscribe button. By heavens along. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>